Greetings of the day to one and all from Team 3i Infotech. Salmat Patang, Malaysia. We welcome you to this grand launch of the first ever Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud in Malaysia. New Ray 3i Plus powered by Oracle. A warm hello to Malaysia. I'm your anchor and host, Sarah Rodericks from Sales and Marketing from India. Well, I feel so privileged to host this launch today and be a part of 3i Infotech. 3i Infotech is having a sovereign cloud launch, which means it cares for the data and business security of its associates and is getting digital growth to many geographies and this time to this amazing nation, Malaysia, truly Asia. Thank you all for setting aside time to be with us today as we dive into the nuances of the convergence of cloud and computing world. When better than now has the world accepts and adopts the inevitable cloud usage, we are going to deep dive on the cloud value propositions data management and transformation, where we build on partners on the basis of trust, but secure our data with zero trust sovereign cloud. So we are all happy to have everyone with us today and our influential leaders. We will now uh, move on and introduce our leaders. I begin with Mr. Juan Murdani Mohammed, Director of Investment Facilitation, MDEC, a representative for the Government of Malaysia for Asia Pacific Telecommunity and International Telecommunication Union. Mr. Mohammed Fitri Abdullah, Managing Director, Oracle Malaysia. Mr. Fitri has nearly three decades of ICT industry experience from both local and international perspective. He has played various roles of regional head, business head, and senior position in most of his career. So let's keep uploading in the chat box as we introduce our leaders. We have the chat box option down at the bottom ribbon, so we can you know, just upload while we introduce our great leaders. Mr. Saks Krishna, Chief Growth Officer, SACS has been clued into digital transformation even in its nascent years and advises CXOs of a client organization. Mr. Nilesh Gupta, Chief Cloud Officer and expert engaging transformational needs to take organization to the cloud and the edge with a cloud first strategy. Mr. Sudeep Nathkarni, Chief Revenue Officer, responsible for running international business which includes Asia Pacific geography. He has over 30 years of experience in raising capital and scaling business ventures, especially in banking and capital markets. He is based out of Chicago, but currently joining us from Kuala Lumpur. Ms. Priya Gautam, our Lady Marketing Chief Marketing Officer. She is an alumnus of Indian Institute of Management from Bangalore the CMO at 3i Infotech. She also holds strategic responsibilities as an advisor at Virginia Tech University, India. With over 15 years of senior management experience in large companies, she is passionate about building brands that address business outcomes. We have next Mr. Leon Baker, Head Digital KPAS, BPAS manages the digital business process units using AI, ML-based platforms, and highly skilled people. Leon comes with 25 years of rich experience in the BPO, BPAS industry, leading teams in BPO operations, sales, solutions, SSE practice building, and business transformation. We also have with us Mr. Ashish Srivastava, head of EdTech and an entrepreneur. Also practice head for Newry campus in India and abroad. And finally, we have Mr. Arup Sanyar, global head of cloud products, center of innovation, a cloud, 
a cloud-based risk and compliance expert. A warm welcome to all you leaders. Well, we have our galaxy of cloud first practitioners from 3i Infotech. We have an interested audience from across all time zones. Although we are all participating virtually, the actual launch is happening on ground in Malaysia. The stage is set, so let's move quickly into the crux of the matter. As a value added, Oracle partner 3i Today has emerged as a leading name in propelling the current value of digital transformation. With deep domain expertise across BFSI, healthcare, manufacturing, retail and government sectors. The company has over 5,000 employees in 30 offices across 15 countries and over 1,000 plus clients in more than 50 countries across four continents. With a wide range of IT solutions, With a wide range of IT services and solutions, 3i Infotech has successfully transformed business operations of customers globally. The company has a very strong foothold and client base in geographies like North America, India, Asia Pacific, Middle East and Africa, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and South Asia. So are you people as eager as I am? If yes, please give some reactions in the chat box. I am waiting to see some reactions. Yes, we have a lot of people participating here. So before we begin the launch, let's wait a bit and welcome our first speaker, Mr. Nilesh Gupta, Chief Cloud Officer, 3i Infotech. Mr. Nilesh Gupta is our Chief Cloud Officer. Mr. Gupta comes with a strong background in techno solutions, adapt at conceptualizing transformation solutions to business challenges. He has over two decades of experience in banking, insurance, manufacturing, retail, and public sector. Handling diverse technology management roles, as practice head for cloud business and edge services at 3i Infotech, he is responsible for managing and <clears throat> growing 3i Infotech's cloud business and accelerating its cloud first strategy globally. Nilesh will give us a ringside view on new index and new portfolio. We welcome you, Mr. Nilesh. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for the good introduction. And I'm really, really, very excited to be here in hopefully be in person, but someday, uh, hopefully we'll do that uh, launch in Malaysia. Uh, and then and, 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 and welcome to the dignitaries, uh, Mr. Fitri and uh, Mr. Van, uh, in this event that we're launching as of today. Uh, and I really wanted to pronounce this correctly, but this is called Good Afternoon or Salamat Patang, Malaysia. And welcome to launch of Nure 3i Plus Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud in Malaysia, which is powered by Oracle. Let me start with the queue, uh, the CEO of MDAC, uh, in a recent article where he mentioned that if you are currently holding less cash in your physical wallet than in your digital e-wallets, you're not alone. The pandemic has induced growth in digitalization and the transformation we have seen in the last two years alone will shape what a world, enterprise, and economy will look like in the future. With hyperscalers being launched all over the world, enterprises and governments are also looking at sovereign cloud. If you remember where we are all hosted on premises way back, decades back, moving your applications and infrastructure to cloud was a challenge. How can you move something that you are already used to seeing every day from your premises to virtual locations? Today, we don't have the same challenge. But many enterprises, banks, insurance, and other industry verticals still prefer to retain their data in the same country they are hosted. And this could be for various reasons, like regulatory compliance, data security, control, and so on and so forth. 
Nure 3A Plus Sovereign Cloud in Malaysia ensures compliance, data security, and control. It delivers the enterprise-grade services to customers who want to improve agility in deployment of their IT resources while keeping their data on the premises. It ensures cloud is ideal for customers in Malaysia desiring cloud benefits but cannot move to the public cloud due to the data sovereignty requirements, industry regulations, corporate policies, security constraints, network latencies, or simply because they find it impractical to move away from the other tightly coupled on-premise IT infrastructure. Our sovereign cloud also comes with zero trust connectivity, which is the first zero trust sovereign cloud in Malaysia. It works by assuming that every connection and the endpoint is considered a threat. The sovereign cloud architecture protects against these threats whether they are external or internal, even for those connections that are already inside. In a nutshell, 3i plus cloud, sovereign cloud will log and inspect all corporate network traffic coming into the cloud. Will limit and control access to the network and verify and secure network resources. New 3i plus, a zero trust sovereign cloud comes with natively built in cloud network applications, Kubernetes, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service that help customers to adopt security layers in OPEX model. For example, firewall as a service, cloud access service brokerage or CASB, data loss prevention or DLP, WAF or web application firewall, cloud security posture management, cloud workload product platform protection, DDoS or distributed denial of services, Zero trust based VPN and much more. All this new 3i plus trust sovereign cloud in Malaysia. And which is now available through a subscription offering without capex that requires no commitments. Besides this, all hardware and software infrastructure within the cloud. Within the sovereign cloud are managed and maintained by Oracle cloud operations team. Known as Oracle advanced customer support. And this is done by Oracle advanced. Customer support platforms that includes automation tools to deliver Oracle advanced support services. Advanced support gateway. And with that team uh, teaming up with 3i Infotech, you get best of both the sides. New 3i plus sovereign cloud powered by Oracle features the most versatile, highly available and functional application platform. With the simplicity with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of Oracle cloud software that is deployed in Malaysia. Enterprise applications can now be easily deployed to maximize productivity, lower the risk, and accelerate time to value. Finally, organizations no longer have to dedicate limited IT talent to manage and maintain their infrastructure. 3i Infotech collaborates with MDEC with a vision to drive a progressive, innovative led digital economy in Malaysia. 3i Infotech's new 3A Plus Sovereign Cloud. Now with sovereign operations, we'll also monitor and manage the entire production operations within Malaysia. We recommend and can help small and medium businesses, enterprises to move their sensitive data and workloads to new plus sovereign cloud in Malaysia. I'm again, really excited to be part of this event and look forward to be in discussions with the SMB and enterprise market within Malaysia. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Nilesh. Indeed, what great insights to the sovereign world and we are getting these services in Malaysia. Thank you so much. So uh, let's get this event into momentum by witnessing the moment which we all were waiting for. The launch of Sovereign Cloud New Ray 3i Plus Malaysia. Are you guys excited? Can we all type uh, clap clap and share some emojis? Yes, and ignite the cloud fire. All the people, are you ready for the launch? Let's applaud while we play the Sovereign Cloud New Ray 3i Plus launch video on stage. I call upon the dignitaries to this much awaited historic launch of the first ever zero trust sovereign cloud in Malaysia. New Ray 3i Plus powered by Oracle. 
Asia-Pacific has grown into a hub of digital innovation, accounting for 50% of the world's internet users. For enterprises in Malaysia, new opportunities with the increase in digitalization and e-commerce brings new challenges. The lack of cloud hyperscalers in the country makes data sovereignty unavailable. While hosting data outside the country increases latency and impacts user experience, and build your own infrastructure brings a unique set of problems, all of which can make cloud adoption seem complex and expensive. Until now, introducing new Ray 3i Plus from 3i Infotech, the first zero trust sovereign cloud in Malaysia, powered by Oracle. Now, enterprises can migrate compliance sensitive workloads to sovereign clouds at a fraction of the cost of traditional hyperscalers. Integrating a wide array of cloud-first products, the Nere 3i Plus Sovereign Cloud serves unique business needs across every industry. Connect devices at the edge to cloud with Nere Edge. Get zero trust-based end-user computing solutions with Nere Desk. Enterprise automation with Nere Campus. Digital B Pass and K Pass services with Nere Velocity and a modular, productized approach with new Ray Vertex. Advanced cloud computing, artificial intelligence, blockchain, internet of things, and quantum computing. Assure robust security and regulatory compliance. And meet the growing demand for Asia faster, more efficiently, and cost effectively. Accelerate the shift to becoming cloud native with the new Ray 3 i Plus Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud and achieve business objectives on a local, regional, and international scale. What an historic moment, what an historic moment, what a transformational launch moment. We are indeed so happy to bring the first ever Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud to Malaysia. I would like to invite Mr. Sax Krishna, our Chief Growth Officer, 3i Infotech, to share the highlights of the first Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud powered by Oracle and our collaboration association of two decades with MDEC. Mr. Sax Krishna has spent over 30 years in IT, BPS, technology domains across North America, Europe, India and APAC with repeated success in digital and business transformation. He plays the role of a strategic advisor to the CXOs of client organization. He's currently serving as the chief growth officer for 3i Infotech. Mr. Thank Sanchez, you, Sarah. Like thank him. you, thank you, Sarah, for the kind words and uh, welcome everyone again. For thank you for taking the time to join us today afternoon. Indeed, a proud moment this is for uh, all of us here, uh, Team Oracle, MDAC, and Team 3i Infotech. Like Sarah mentioned, for the first time in the history of digitally transformed businesses in Malaysia, we just launched the Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud, especially configured to address the needs of both enterprises and more importantly, small, medium businesses in both Malaysia and the ASEAN region. Firstly, it's befitting that MDAC, the driver of digital economy in Malaysia, has seen value in our investments and collaboration to bring New Day 3i Plus, an Oracle-powered sovereign cloud that complies with data sovereignty and regulatory norms to Malaysia. This first global launch in the region will also benefit other nations that wish to expand and leverage cloud but seek operational data sovereignty, making Malaysia a forerunner in the use of zero trust sovereign cloud to operate beyond borders and yet secure and comply with all data associated regulations. Second, who better than Oracle, our trusted partner, to ensure this critical compliance? 3A New Ray 3i Plus, powered by Oracle, extends region deployment options to address customer and government sovereignty requirements. Small and large businesses in Malaysia can control their deployments, location, accessibility, operation, support, regulatory environments, and internet connectivity. By combining these options around 3i Infotech's cloud-first strategy and core deployment protocol, 
businesses can meet their stringent security, compliant and sovereignty requirements. But why Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud and why 3i Infotech? We are orchestrators of digital transformation. And orchestration, by definition, means that you're stitching ecosystems together to deliver a common outcome or to solve a business problem. And we believe that digital transformation is all about orchestrated options to adopt cloud. So we want to enable digital transformation in the cloud for our customers. And in doing so, we would have transformed their current digital footprint into a cloud first design. As enterprises put the data, the new liquid gold, onto cloud, it's extremely critical to ensure its privacy and security, including its residency within the sovereign boundaries. It is this need to secure applications and data that drove us to launch the Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud today. Very proud to be on this platform, launching new 3 i Plus, powered by Oracle in Malaysia for many, many reasons. Uh, the fundamental reason is our commitment and belief that the cloud first strategy has a deep impact on how it transforms enterprises digitally. The second aspect of this is our partnership and investment in Oracle competency and therefore with co-launching with Oracle. And the third factor to be happy is this is our first launch in the region for a cloud enabled digital transformation. In this context, we are also pleased and proud to present two other solutions, New Ray Velocity and New Ray Campus Labs. A new Ray Velocity, a comprehensive solution for business process management, bringing together the best of skilled human resources and AI driven technology. New Ray Velocity has been designed as a premier solution for enterprises with its New Ray Vertex version specially created for SMBs. This solution from our New Ray signature suite comes with all the features and security measures that we build into our New Ray cloud solutions. Our New Ray campus created as an ERP for total digital transformation of higher education organizations like large schools and, and universities is also suited for large multi-department, multi-location entities or enterprises and has a proven track record offering services to both government and non-government organizations of large stature, catering to thousands of users across campuses. We'll hear more on these solutions during the rest of today's session, but thank you each one of you again for taking the time to join us. Over to you, Sarah. Thank you, Sachs. Thank you so much for those insights. So we have just launched, you know, and today's day has made history for 3i, Infotech, Oracle, and MDEC. And we assure that this relationship just keeps growing. We now welcome our next uh, uh, video, Mr. Mohammad Fitri Abdullah, Managing Director, Oracle Malaysia, to share his insights on 3i Infotech and Oracle partnership. Mr. Fitri has nearly three decades of ICT industry experience for both local and international perspective. Within the last 18 years of his career, he has held various senior leadership positions in several companies such as Mesnach Barhad, Maxis Barhad, and Hewlett Packard HP in Malaysia. Over to you, Mr. Mohammed. Okay, thank you, uh, Sarah. Uh, a very good afternoon to all attendees uh, in this very uh, auspicious uh, event. Um, on behalf of Oracle, I would like to congratulate uh, the team from uh, 3i Infotech. I think this is a very significant launch. Um, big investment from uh, 3i Infotech in um, providing the uh, new Ray uh, 3i Plus solutions. I think for Malaysia, hosted in Malaysia for all the Malaysian customers um, targeting both SMB and also enterprise and possibly also the um, government side. Uh, so a big uh, congratulations. Uh, we are indeed very uh, proud to be um, a strategic partner globally. I think with uh, 3i Infotech uh, in this case for Malaysia, but uh, we are also working closely with uh, 3i Infotech all over the world. Um, and this is obviously in line uh, with the uh, strategic uh, direction from the government uh, with the My Digital program uh, to enhance the adoption of digital services uh, in Malaysia for all the businesses. Huh? So, so I think this is uh, obviously uh, in line with the overall uh, scheme of um, Malaysia moving up the value chain 
uh, in the adoption of uh, digital and uh, looking forward to working closely um, uh, with uh, 3i uh, Infotech uh, going forward uh, together with MDEC uh, to make sure that um, this adoption will be successful. And um, uh, so on my side, I think definitely big congratulations and uh, let's make that big, uh, big uh, business impact uh, in the market. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitri. Yes, indeed, we are going to make a big, big business impact together. Uh, we have our next dignitary, Mr. Vaughan Murtani Mohammad, Director of Investment Facilitation, MDEC. He has been with MDEC for over 20 years. He's also a representative for the government of Malaysia for Asia Pacific Telecommunity and Telecommunication Union. I'm honored to call him and touch base on MDEC and the first sovereign cloud. Uh, thank you, uh, Sarah. So a uh, very good afternoon uh, to colleagues. Uh, first of all, on behalf of MDEC, I'd like to thank uh, 3i Infotech and also Oracle for inviting us to be part of this auspicious event. And certainly uh, we are excited uh, to see uh, the growth of this kind of ecosystem uh, coming into Malaysia and be the government agency mandated uh, to drive the digital economy. Uh, so we are uh, supportive of this kind of investments and initiative. Certainly it will add up the value of our ecosystem and also drive the adoption within SMEs and also enterprise uh, businesses uh, moving into uh, digital transformation as part of the expansion. So we are under the Ministry of Communication and Multimedia Malaysia, or KCOM. So uh, with the support of the ministry, uh, we are putting uh, enough initiative uh, at the national level to make sure that we are giving uh, right support and intervention uh, for us to be able to drive more investments into this thing. And I'd like to uh, also mention that uh, cloud is certainly one of the focus area that MDEC and Malaysia is putting our resources on because we believe uh, it is uh, an important enabler uh, to enable the company to transform digitally. And obviously this type of uh, services being put by uh, 3i Infotech would certainly jive and fit well into uh, our ecosystem. And we look forward to have more uh, investments coming in. And we take note that uh, 3i Infotech have approached us last year and uh, giving a good value proposition in terms of investments, uh, the type of uh, jobs to be created, and also the amount of investments which we believe will create the impact uh, to the ecosystem. And again, uh, we, we, we are excited and we will continue to support uh, 3i and also to our to the partner Oracle, who have been uh, in, in Malaysia for quite some time, uh, certainly uh, one of the drivers uh, in, in the cloud ecosystem. And uh, obviously, the partnership between 3i and Oracle would certainly enrich uh, the, the coverage and also would just en enlarge the outreach uh, to reach out uh, to more uh, adopters out there and also help us to bring the ecosystem players into the into the country and also uh, provide the necessary services uh, at a, uh, taking into account the need to have a, a, a trusted system where it is important for us to make sure that we can safeguard the digital economy and we believe that the solution provided by the 3i and oracle would certainly uh, jive and also fitted well into the need for us to make sure that we can balance between the technology development and also how do we navigate through the regulatory uh, uh, requirements to make sure that we can all deliver the services to the customers so again on behalf of MDEC, on behalf of our ministry we would like to thank and welcome 3i infotech information and certainly we continue MDEC will continue to support in the in the way that we have been supporting the industry for the past 25 years so thank you very much congratulations on behalf of MDEC. thank you very much good to be good to see a good launching and ho hope to see that you are growing uh, faster in, in malaysia in years to come thank you very much Thank you, Mr. Vaughan. Now that, that calls for a round of applause. Yeah, we now have our Nubre Velocity on screen. Nubre Velocity is a convergence of human-humanoid collaboration, a cloud-first, digital-first, business process as a service and digital technology ecosystem, powered by cognitive, pre-configured, pre-orchestrated and industry calibrated business outcome. 
monitoring services. New Rio Velocity enables enterprises, small and large, to enrich their front, middle, and back office processes and empowers them with an advanced digital maturity journey. Mr. Leon Baker heads digital k -Pass and p -Pass practice globally for 3i Infotech. We now have New Rio Velocity launch video being presented. The future of technology will see a phenomenal degree of convergence where humanoid and human coexistence will be a reality. 3i Infotech is a leader in this convergence with its game changer, New Rio Velocity. The cloud first, digital first, business process as a service ecosystem, powered by cognitive, pre-configured, pre-orchestrated, industry calibrated, and outcome monitoring services. New Re Velocity enables enterprises, small and large, to experience an advanced digital maturity journey through on-demand services. Leaders can now utilize their SaaS budgets to drive better business outcomes. Let's take a look at New Re Velocities Computing at the Edge Digital Platform. Welcome to Omnia Connect. We understand that enterprises need to delight their customers and grow their lifetime value. Omni Connect offers state of the art services around advanced analytics, customer segmentation, and lead generation. It is a highly scalable, omni channel, customer experience ecosystem with 10 plus touch points, 15 plus social media apps, supporting 50 plus global languages. Say hello to iPulse. With the advent of new digital solutions, HR leaders are looking to adopt future ready strategies to upskill talent, enhance employee engagement, and fuel organization growth. iPulse is the first in class employee sourcing and smart performance management ecosystem designed to make the hiring and employee engagement more insightful and actionable. Now, HR leaders will be able to have a pulse on the smooth onboarding and evaluation of the right resources to grow their organization. We have powered over 30 million employees and impacted 1.7 million plus organizations across various industry verticals. Meet ICFO. The first of its kind low code no code one-stop solution for all finance and accounting needs it is designed to automate invoice extraction accurately process across multi-approval matrix match multiple inputs and enhance fraud controls it is quickly deployable easily curated and can be integrated into any enterprise financial core system icfo has one purpose in mind maximize business accounting speed and accuracy with over 20 plus customized reporting dashboards and controls. ICFO has made complexities of core business invoice processing, reconciliation and reporting, simple and easy to navigate. Welcome to Zenith. The low code NLP driven intelligent automation system with Zenith's digital automation capabilities, you can build applications on the fly and drive smart innovative ideas for processing. From financial systems, supply chain management and intricate customer experience journeys, Zenith enables enterprises to quickly digitalize and automate their services and help them realize outcomes faster. It is enriched with unique offerings like insurance in box, email management services, fraud and risk for online payments, lead management, customer onboarding, KYC, automation services, biometrics authentication automation, and many more. Join our digital revolution. Enjoy our committed business outcome services today. Invent, incubate, innovate,
that was amazing yes or no indeed that was amazing i think the video has definitely got us in velocity we now proceed to introduce nuri campus nuri campus is the best in class higher education erp platform that organizes unifies and automates all functions of education institutions it serves to connect campuses departments and all stakeholders seamlessly to sase safe new re cloud mr ashish shrivastava vp and global head of edtech at 3i infotech is scaling up new re campus a best in class higher education erp used by top universities in india by taking it to cloud and looking at global expansion we will have the new re campus video getting played Are you wasting a lot of precious time and resources due to outdated and silent infrastructure to access real-time information for decision making? Is your staff overworked with mundane administrative tasks and unable to engage with prospective students productively? Are your manual processes unable to provide students and faculty a consolidated platform to manage their academic calendar? Say hello to the game changer new Ray Campus. an award winning ai based erp to organize manage and unify educational institutes digitally powered by analytics automation iot and future tech new ray campus focuses on cutting edge technologies with the aim to drive end to end transformation of the higher education ecosystem new ray campus comes enriched with a wide range of unique capabilities admissions and fees management student and faculty information academics and examination management financial and hr administration purchase and inventory and many more reducing examination result preparation time by 90% reducing administrative costs by 30% reducing communication costs by 75% driving growth in student base by 20% per annum The ERP has helped us streamline our academic and finance processes which has resulted in more efficient operations. It is a very comprehensive system. We are pleased and I can say that it was one of the best investments that AUD has done. New Ray Campus is cost competitive, offers flexible payment subscription models and can be seamlessly integrated with your existing applications. A highly scalable platform that is capable of handling small to very large institutions. get future ready with new ray campus become the campus of choice ask for a demo today or check our try before you buy option wow now that's what i call a great launch yes education is the key to success and we are happy to be a part of this digital growth expansion for all of us we now move to this interesting session of a five side chat with our sovereign leaders who would like to share their thoughts on various industry topics i would like to introduce our panel moderator mr arup sanyal global head of cloud products center of innovation mr arup is an expert on risk and compliance in the cloud and is best suited to moderate this interesting fireside discussion i also have with me a panelist i call this group our fantastic four mr won murdani mohammad director of investment facilitation mdec mr nilesh gupta chief cloud officer 3i infotech limited and mr sudeep nathkarni chief revenue officer 3i infotech we welcome the panels thank you thank you sara thank you so much i'm really glad i'm sure that all of you are having wonderful sessions till now and and more exciting 
sessions we are getting into. I'm really glad to have all the panelists with me. Uh, thank you all of you for being here. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start with, uh, you know, some of the thoughts which I have noted during the sessions. Uh, Nilesh, uh, you have talked about that new ray 3 i plus zero trust sovereign cloud is meant for SMBs, small business, uh, medium business, as well as enterprise clients. Uh, just uh, to take it from there, uh, just to uh, ask about that, how this uh, platform uh, to help and address the enterprise clients or, or any small medium businesses, data protection and uh, local uh, requirements uh, to access, uh, address the local requirements of in Malaysia perspective. And absolutely, uh, and and thanks, Arup, for having me on this uh, uh, panelist as well. Uh, if if you go back in time, you know, in in terms of uh, uh, the last two decades, uh, we have seen uh, the transformation uh, from what it used to be an on-premise to a near colo to a cloud uh, to now to more of a sovereign cloud, right? So so that's a transformation that has been taking place. Uh, in the last two years alone, what we have also seen is that uh, you know everybody needs to move into digital, you know, because of the accessibility uh, of their application infrastructure and data, uh, the the user base, which I call it as a borderless workforce, right? Because we are able to work from anywhere. Uh, so 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 that that that's a become a need in terms of using uh, what you connect with, how you connect with, and 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 securing the data from anywhere you're currently working from. So the using cloud services has now become an essential component of a digital transformation journey. Uh, with that, a very responsible uh, ability also lies with the hosting partner like us. How do we provide a data protection with that data privacy, which is also fueling the cloud now so more from a sovereign cloud perspective as well. Now, the idea behind the sovereign cloud is to also ensure that the services that are provided within the control of the jurisdiction of Malaysia uh, where it is hosted and also being used. Now, 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 with that, if you see in Malaysia with the last two years alone and the MDEC 2030 plan, my digital plan, uh, where we want a uh, majority of the SMBs and enterprise to adopt digital in some form and shape, we're also seeing the last two years, a uh, lot of e-commerce, a lot of retailers, e-tailers, uh, small business uh, and large businesses also has been adopting cloud. So the cloud is a first step towards the digital adoption perspective as well as part of the journey that we're talking about. Now, when you speak about the residency and sovereign requirements, we are also talking about the various value benefits uh, the sovereign cloud could bring to this industry as well, and specifically in Malaysia, is that, you know, how do we protect the data? How do we make it compliance from the regional perspective, regulatory compliance perspective, the organization that is going to be hosted, they might have their own uh, process and compliance perspective as well. So it needs the complete data production and compliance in all aspects. How do they grow in terms of the uh, moving onto the cloud from reaching out to the mass audience rather than being stringent to their uh, on-premise model where they will not be able to access? And in most of the uh, customers I've been speaking to in the last few uh, quarters in Malaysia, uh, because of whatever reasons, they were denied access to the buildings because it was a lockdown and they couldn't do anything out of there as well, right? So moving onto the cloud becomes an essential, moving onto the sovereign cloud becomes even more essential from that perspective as well. So they need to continuously grow uh, to the business and with confidence is what the key element of uh, that will bring to the table of SMB and enterprise markets as well. Now, you know, it, we're also talking about the fostering the industry in terms of the business. Now, how fast can I take these things to the market? How fast can I launch it out? So I'm competing within the in, uh, industry levels, also within the company, as well as the, the competition that it becomes on the table. I can't wait for six to eight weeks to make the compute happen and then go live. I need to make it happen like yesterday. So the faster time to market is also an, in, 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 an important aspect of the sovereign cloud that brings to the table. And lastly, of course, you know, how can I scale with an efficient module at the same time, have an, uh, uh, continuous compliance and security as part of the zero trust also bring to the table. So it, it's, it's the best of all sites. We're talk about it from a compliance, from the security, uh, from the regulatory, uh, and also from the scalability of how I can take it to the market from time to market as well. Sure. Thank you, Nilesh. I think very good insight, uh, which you have talked about time to execute and, and, you know, uh, with all the regularity aspects are keeping in mind. 
uh, let, let me take it from here because we are talking about data security, uh, the protection of, of data while it is being, and every other organizations today in, in the cloud journey or, or cloud adoption path, they're more concerned about how to protect the company data or, or enterprise data, how that is secured. And, and specific uh, while, uh, you know, Malaysia is, is very specific to have the personal data protection act is, is already there. Uh, let me ask uh, Mr. Wan about, uh, do you think that this regularity compliance as a solution for companies uh, to host the lo data locally using uh, this new Ray 3i plus zero trust over in cloud? Uh, thank you, uh, Arup. So uh, certainly uh, this is an uh, an avenue for SMEs and enterprise users to use for them to allow them to use cloud. Uh, but on the uh, personal data protection or PDPA, it is largely uh, addressing the protection of the personal data. But when it comes to the enterprise or SME data, which is more on the on the on the on the business side. Uh, there are two uh, requirements that, that 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 we have to fulfill. The first one is the the what the policy of the company itself. Uh, it is very important that they have to differentiate between. Uh, they have to classify certain data, certain services which can go on the public cloud, which cannot go on the public cloud. So the the, the offerings by 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 uh, Nuri 3 I would certainly give avenue for them to put up uh, services on this type of cloud. Because in Malaysia, we, we do promote the adoption of the cloud. Uh, remember, it, our government launched a first cloud first policy uh, where we, we, we want to make sure that uh, the public sector, the critical sectors, financial sectors, and all those critical sectors uh, will be given a leeway in terms of the team cloud. And the regulators then would have their own guidelines, which is quite progressive in Malaysia uh, to enable the, the, the regulated entities to adopt cloud. So, uh, for the unregulated enti uh, entities such as uh, uh, logistics or maybe retail, suddenly they have, have instant access uh, to, uh, to new re 3 i uh, for them to be able to host uh, their services on this platform. And uh, in terms of uh, the regulated entities, uh, they can be guided by the guidelines which enable them to adopt a cloud, but obviously they have to do some risk mitigation plans. So in a way, for example, like if that data has to be hosted locally, cannot be outside of Malaysia, then this could be the option for them uh, to host the services on this day. So yes, to your questions, whether this could be the solution, certainly there will be solutions. And again, it is depending on the appetite of the users on the type of services and data they ever to put on the cloud. But on the behalf of government, we, we, we know that the transformation of digital journey can only be enabled if they adopt cloud. And what you have uh, introduced in Malaysia with Financial Oracle, that is the avenue uh, for the company to be able to transform themselves without, I mean, with all the regulatory requirements and other risk mitigation has been taken care by the, by the, by the fact that the platform provided by Nuri has taken into account on the security and safety level where the customers can really uh, 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 adjust or really provision uh, their security requirements based on the features provided by new 3 i So yes, in a, in a way, it, it, will, it will accelerate the adoption both in the regulator and unregulated entities as part of the malicious plan to transform digitally. Great. I think that is excellent. Nothing I, I, I can't uh, you know, agree more to you and that gives a lot of confidence to us as well that what we have launch today that is going to you know take us to long way and and, and supporting the malaysia's all the requirement local requirements specifically securing the data which we are talking about now let, 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 let me uh, you know come to you again uh, for another part of it because uh, you know a lot of security a lot of restrictions are there with respect to the malaysia's specific requirement in the digital economy space perspective malaysia digital economy corporations and malaysia digital association uh, both together last year announced the agreement, uh, you know, announced an agreement to foster collaborations uh, through corporate innovations, mentorship, and a lot of accelerator programs to raise uh, raise uh, awareness uh, on initiatives. 
uh, said to benefit digital economy ecosystems. Just, just uh, you know, want to understand that. What do you think about? Uh, what is your views on uh, that? How this is going to help in the digital economy growth by using this new rate three I plus, uh, you know, zero trust sovereign cloud. So again, uh, as as the agency mandated drive digital economy, we do have partnerships and collaboration with various industry associations, including MDA. So uh, our role is to connect uh, the supply and to the demand. So we, we have had uh, through various programs that we did for the past 25 years uh, that touches uh, businesses, government and communities, including SMEs. So we do know what are the pain points uh, of this industry and the sectors. And uh, the the fact that uh, we also develop the industry through collaboration with industry partners, so the lights of Nuri 3i and 3i Infotech would certainly be the the supply would center our supply ecosystem in that sense. So uh, we we what we do is apart from uh, uplifting the capabilities of the communities of the businesses of the government, and we have to make sure that yeah the demand for digital services. Are be men. So in this case, uh, through this collaboration, and we would foresee that the lights of Nuri 3i and 3i Infotech would have access to those kind of demand. Uh, and uh, as part of our effort is we, 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 we do engage with the critical sectors. So we are aware of the challenges faced by the critical sectors, what type of services required by them, what type of talent that need to be uplifted, and we connect them to the, to, to the suppliers. To the ecosystem suppliers. So in this case, Nuri 3i is fits perfectly into this equation. And while we do our de developmental programs uh, to uplift the capability and the capacity of the businesses, of the users, or the of the SMEs, but we would be uh, very excited uh, to have the supply ecosystem serving the needs of those uh, kind of demand. So again. Uh, looking at the various uh, uh, diversified portfolios of uh, new re 3 i I would see that there are some new opportunities for growth that new re 3 i can penetrate into the market. And we would love to 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 have uh, to connect you to the to the to the to the to the users to the demand, and we will play a role of what kind of intervention if there are if there is a need of for policy intervention to enable the businesses to grow. By virtue of subscribing to the services of the industry player like Nuri 3i, then MDEC is there uh, to make sure that we can communicate what are the gaps, what are the solutions, and what are the recommendations to enable that the, the two ecosystems, the supply ecosystem and demand ecosystem, can come together and together contribute to the uh, to the to the our aspiration, which is gain for digital economy to contribute about 25.3% to our GDP by 2025. So in essence, we need this kind of ecosystem. So that, that's the take that I have on behalf of MDEC on how do we help the industry, how do we grow the ecosystem uh, uh, for the country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wan. That gives a lot of uh, you know, excitement and a lot of confidence to us that we are in the right path uh, to contribute to the digital economy growth in, in Malaysia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wan. I'll, I'll move on to the next question, which I have in mind that uh, 3i, in 3i, we have a lot of focus uh, in, in the industry focus on related to the BFSI. Uh, let me uh, you know, uh, go to uh, Sudeep to ask about that, uh, which is important in the BFSI segment. They are more uh, to concern about data privacy, data protections, and, 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 and you know, with, with related to that, uh, when uh, it is important and what is your thought process about how to take that in, in line with BFSI when enterprise to host BFSI customers to host data on cloud. So the, what is your views? Yeah, no, no, thanks for your question, uh, Arup. Uh, before I address uh, uh, the question itself, let me say first that uh, I'm, I'm super thrilled and proud that the first uh, Zero Trust Sovereign Cloud has been launched in the geography that I'm fortunate to lead. So I just wanted to say that um, uh, it's all because of all of the hard work that's gone into that, both from Nilesh and his team, as well as uh, with the support of uh, Mr. Fitri and Oracle, as well as Mr. Wan Murdani uh, from MDEC. So I think it's kudos to all, all of them. Um, specific to your question, Narup, around financial services, um, as I like to say, like financial services doesn't really have a product like a phone or something like that. It's all about data, right? Like, and, and 
And nowadays you hardly barely get to see your money anymore. It just goes from wherever you're earning to wherever you're spending. And it's all in the, in the cloud, right? So how the data is stored, who can see it, who can access it, update it, use it, has huge amounts of uh, both privacy as well as security implications, not to mention the latency. I think some one of the speakers talked about the speed at which uh, data is accessed and stuff. So privacy, security, latency is paramount, especially in a world where we are looking at uh, the customers of banking and financial services, which are not just the retail folks, but also enterprises as well as governments um, are increasingly the workforce is uh, is mobile. There's a proliferation of devices. Uh, people are going across geographical boundaries. And in a world where um, this is happening, um, it's, it's, it's very important that there is uh, both uh, 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 control, but also transparency in the, in the, in the data that's happening, right? And, and something like a private cloud, which has, um, um, I think Nilesh mentioned the fact about zero trust. It just, you can't really trust any device that uh, that is uh, linking to the node, I think it's super important given the sensitivity of financial information, not to mention the governance laws that I think Mr. Uh, Juan Murdani mentioned earlier, where the governments are looking at making sure that um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the data privacy of the, of the geographies in which um, uh, the data is stored is maintained, right? So, so it's, 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 it's net net, uh, it's super important financial services. It has implications both from a retail uh, customer standpoint, but also enterprises and government. Great. I think, I think very nice, uh, Ali, uh, explained Sudeep. Thank you for that focus and just taking from there as, as, because we are talking about, uh, you know, zero trust, we're talking about server in cloud. Uh, let me, let me ask, uh, Nilesh, uh, you know, what is this word about zero, zero trust? We have been talking about, uh, entire session. Is this is an additional. Uh, you know, layer of security, what it does actually, if you can uh, give us some insights about it, sir. So, Deep just answered that question <laughs> before. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, just to add to what Sudeep said, you know, uh, one of the basic uh, features of zero trust is we don't trust anybody. We don't trust any user. We don't trust any connection. We don't trust any device in, in the very, very basic of what the zero trust is all about. But when you when you marry zero trust with cloud sovereignty, because as of today, as a default solution, when I have a sovereign cloud, when I have a zero trust together as a default solution uh, to my customers, no other cloud providers as of today provide that as a default services to the industry. They have to implement cloud, they have to implement zero trust. Within the zero trust, I mentioned about CASB, secure gateway access, uh, you know, uh, secure VPN, secure internet access. Those are all additional features of you know, building your secure gateway to your solutions as well, right? So we give for the first, we give this as a service, as a default service to whether you are talking to a small, medium businesses or you're talking to a large enterprise, they get the similar kind of security, similar kind of zero trust architecture from day one itself by default. Now, of course, zero trust is an added layer, like I and and, and Sudeep clearly pointed out very nicely in, in his statements. But cloud sovereignty also involves several areas that include are not limited to the production of data or data privacy alone, right? While we provide sovereign cloud, there will also be people or a borderless workforce who are still connected or will connect from their own devices. You know, um, you know, when you're working from home, they connect with your corporate device or you're working from uh, connecting from their own devices, using their own Wi-Fi systems, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the zero trust approach is designed to facilitate that risk management. You know, when you're in, in your internal corporate world, in your offices, you're bound by your uh, laptop, by the devices provided by your corporate, you're bound by the network that is provided by your corporate. But when you're outside, I could be sitting in one of the Starbucks and using their Wi-Fi, and I don't know how secure their Wi-Fi is. So I'm going to use the zero trust default solution, which is on my New Day 3i Plus sovereign cloud, to give that kind of security to the end users in Malaysia, uh, to be secured both from a data protection as well as data security and privacy from that perspective as well. So yes to the question, it is an added layer. It is a default layer to my uh, sovereign cloud in Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you, Nilesh. I think by now we have uh, all the insights shared by all the panelists. Thank you so much. I think we have built the trust with our zero trust over in cloud by now. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think looking at the time, I'll, I'll just end this.
panel discussions here. Uh, this, sorry, one, one, yeah, one, sure. one more thing to add because it's not, it's not just about sovereign cloud. It's also about the solutions that we're going to host on on these clouds, right? We talk about near velocity. We spoke about a new campus, et cetera, et cetera, right? So all these also are hosted on the same sovereign cloud. And when we go and provide solutions to the to the uh, to the ed tech market, to the financial institutions, by default, they are also protected. Yes. Behind all, all well. So it's not just the I, infrastructure, but also the solutions that are hosted on this uh, sovereign cloud is also protected from the same zero trust that we provide as a service. Very, very important. Thank you, Nilesh, for putting that. Up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, over to you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Arup. Uh, you know, we are in Malaysia and we have just launched our zero trust sovereign cloud first time in Malaysia. Also, New Ray Velocity, New Ray Campus, plus we have our leaders and our panelists here. So I think, you know, even our audience wants to, uh, you know, ask or put forward some questions. So any questions, audience, our panelists are here. They are up for some questions and you all can, uh, they can answer it. You all can ask your questions in the chat box and they are up to answer it. We don't want to miss this chance. We have four leaders. Yeah, I just wanted to check that anybody has any questions, please come yeah. up. I think there's one coming up. Is this private cloud for 3i? Yes, yeah, so I will take this uh, question, Sarah. Yes, it is a, it's a private cloud. It's a sovereign private cloud, zero trust sovereign private cloud, which is hosted in Malaysia. Uh, uh, but it's it's also the sovereign operations that it brings to the table as well, right? So when we're managing, uh, when you say talk about sovereignty, it's not about just hosting; it's also about how do you support the sovereign cloud from an operation perspective as well. Uh, so it's end-to-end -end sovereign from in all aspects that we're talking about, which is hosted in Malaysia. Thank you, Nilesh. Oh, we have another one. How quickly can we migrate to cloud? Absolutely, you know, uh, we have a cloud management platform, uh, which we use for an automation of migration. Uh, we call it as a cloud adoption, a box a framework of services. And uh, in the past, uh, for an example, we have migrated a customer's ERP in less than two days uh, from their own premises uh, to the cloud. So we will you continue to use the same cloud management platform uh, as part of the cloud adoption uh, box framework of services to migrate. Okay. We'll wait for a last final one. Only one question before we end up. Oh, there are a couple of them. Malaysia want to pick. Are we looking at creating any new jobs in Malaysia? I can... yeah, absolutely. Sorry, go ahead, Sudeep. No, I, I think um, um, the the question is around job creation. I, I think we are, as a company, we are aligned to uh, the My Digital uh, Blueprint, the initiative uh, which uh, the Malaysian government um, uh, has. And as part of that, this whole um, a notion of um, the, the, the way we are approaching it is not just a, a technology, but a, a mix of human and humanoid, right? Um, um, uh, which we believe will create uh, growth in uh, employment opportunities um, uh, over the next uh, three to four years of over a thousand headcount. And this is both a combination of uh, the digital BPAS, the, what, what we call the business process as a service, and the KPAS, the knowledge processing as a service, something that uh, was covered earlier as part of the velocity. But it also involves uh, high tech or frontier technology jobs, uh, jobs around. AI, ML, um, uh, IoT, and the application of those technologies, which are which are higher end employment opportunities within the region. So, as a as a company, I think we're committed to the geography, uh, which is clearly evident from the investments that has gone in into the in, into the cloud infrastructure. But it's also about uh, uh, training and re um, uh, reskilling of of the existing. So, it's the higher train engage type of a model, the HTA model, as we call it. Um, uh, uh, in in very specific areas, so I think th there is absolutely um, uh, a, um, uh, a a focus on, on the creation of jobs in the geographies that we are operating in. So hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Sudeep. Should we take one more? 
Does moving to cloud mean incurring additional costs? Last one. It's from Mr. Ayush. Yep, so I'll probably take that one as well. Uh, not necessarily uh, because there are a lot of benefits by moving to cloud, the scalable, faster time to market that we spoke about earlier, uh, and then and so on, so forth, avoiding capex, being a more opex model, and so on and so forth. It all depends on on the on the enterprise or a medium businesses business model. Why would like to move onto the cloud? Uh, but the more important aspect is that when you move onto the cloud, you completely avoid the capex route, which every five six years you got to reinvest on your software, reinvest on your uh, hardware and etc. And so and reinvest on your uh, uh, talent and skills as well. So that is the kind of thing which we're getting rid of and giving to more opex and more finer opex model uh, when we're moving on to from on premise or co-location to a cloud model as well. Thank you, Nilesh. There are many questions, you know, in the chat box. I uh, assure you that our leaders will answer all the questions, you know, on mail. We can we can contact uh, them and we can have all the questions answered. So finally, time to say goodbye. We thank all our speakers, our partners, and you, lovely audience. A big thank you from 3i Infotech family. This event was indeed very special for all of us.